Hey, what's up guys? So this is super late, but happy new year. Um, I have not been filming or uploading anything to YouTube in quite a while. Um, I planned to start uh, uploading again back in January, but then I've been like a little sick and kind of congested the last few weeks. So um, I didn't sound good on camera. I didn't upload anything, but I'm back now. And today I'm talking about the 2019 13 inch MacBook Pro and specifically is using this as a video and photo editing computer. So really quickly, the specs of the MacBook Pro that I'm using, like I said, it's the 2019 13 inch MacBook Pro. I have the 1.4 gigahertz quad core Intel i5 processor. The only thing that I upgraded from the base model of this is the memory. So I have 16 gigabytes of RAM memory and the base just 128 gigabyte hard drive. So if you're going to be editing video uh, and even photo directly off of your hard drive, I would definitely suggest that you upgrade that. That's not very much space for um, video photo editing but I always edit off of an external hard drive um, and that's much cheaper to buy external hard drives and edit directly off of that than actually um, paying for the upgrade in size in the internal hard drive on the MacBook. So that's what I did. So now I'm gonna head into the other room really quick where I do most of my editing and um, walk you guys through my thoughts on this um, MacBook Pro as a video and photo editing computer. And hopefully if you're interested, if you're maybe looking into getting this computer for that purpose, hopefully this will give you some insights into whether this would be a good idea for you. Oh, by the way, I always forget to say this, but I do have affiliate links to these products down below. If you are interested in purchasing any of the products that I talk about in this video, at no extra cost to you, um, if you click through the affiliate links down below um, for either Amazon or Adorama, if you're purchasing them through there, it will, again, no extra cost to you, but it helps to support this channel so that I can continue making content and videos for you guys. So thanks for that. All right, so first I'm going to talk about the actual, like, outside. Like, if this was a camera, I would call it the body of the uh, camera, but the body of the... MacBook Pro, I guess. So first of all, it's really slim, really lightweight. So before this, I had a 2017 uh, MacBook Air, and this 2019 MacBook Pro is actually smaller, thinner, dimension smaller in every way than that 2017 MacBook Air, which I really like. Um, the small size and weight uh, makes it much more portable easy to take around with me and work on the go. But if you want something bigger, go for something bigger, go for the 16 inch. It does seem that like the outside tends to scratch a little bit more easily than um, the MacBook Air at least. Uh, it doesn't look terrible, but it, it like scuffs up a little bit and um, it's kind of hard to like wipe it off. And like I take really good care of my stuff. So that's from being in like the laptop sleeve in my camera bag type of thing. So yeah, if you if you want it to be looking pristine all the time, it's you're gonna have to keep up with that a lot. Another thing is the touch bar right here. I didn't know how I was gonna feel about this, but I actually really love it. I'd have to still get even more used to actually using it because there are a lot of things that you can do with it um, and it changes from like app to app. Uh, you can pull up apps with it even. Um, there's different controls within apps. So far, I'm definitely not using it to its full potential. I, I forget about it and that it's even there kind of a lot, um, but I do like that it's there. One thing is the ports. There are on this version, two USB-C and then one headphone jack. I like having USB-C. I still think it's a little bit ridiculous that it's only USB-C, I think, for a MacBook Pro, we should at least get like SD card. Not having that means that I have to use um, adapters, dongles, whatever you wanna call them. And that can be frustrating when you have so much stuff that has to use an adapter. Um, anytime I'm importing media from my camera, I have to use an adapter to plug in the SD card, that kind of thing. That's a little bit frustrating, but I do like USB-C. 
So I just wish that there was USB-C and at least like SD card or something. USB-C charger, it seems to be really fast. Um, I'm happy with it. Another cool thing is uh, that I can actually use the MacBook charger to charge my camera, my EOS R. I can plug the MacBook charger directly into that camera and charge the battery with the battery still in it, which is cool. Doesn't really have anything to do with this review, but just a side note, I guess. The screen on the MacBook, I absolutely love. The colors are very accurate, very easy to see, and very easy to work with. Uh, your eyes don't get tired looking at it for long periods of time. Um, yeah, I, I have nothing but good things to say about the screen on this MacBook. Performance-wise for editing, for photo editing, I think the exact specs that I have, um, as long as you're not uh, editing directly off of the hard drive and you're importing stuff from um, your external hard drive, I think these settings are uh, exactly what you need, everything that you need for editing photos. The photos that I edit are um, mainly from my EOS R, which is a 30 megapixel sensor, um, so file sizes are relatively big, and I don't use the compressed RAW on the EOS R. I, I will probably mess with that later, but full-size RAW images, 30 megapixel is what I mostly work with. It has done awesome as far as speed of importing, processing, uh, and exporting photos. I have nothing but good things to say. Again, the color on the screen, I have been very happy with. I have not really come across any problems with this setup for photo editing whatsoever. As far as video editing goes, um, I also really like this setup. Uh, again, the screen is great. Colors are great on the screen. For playback, I mostly shoot 1080 all eye codec from my EOS R, which is 1080, so that's a lower resolution, but the EOS R has a really high uh, bit rate. So like for instance, the bit rate from the EOS R is actually higher than um, the bit rate from the Sony a7 III when it's filming in 4K. So it is a lot of data still that it uh, is, is, is putting out in that footage. Editing on Premiere Pro, which is what I uh, exclusively use for, for video editing, um, has been fine. Uh, usually I'll have the playback speed set at um, one half. If I'm doing something a little bit more intense, um, if I am uh, filming and editing something in 4K, then I'll put the playback speed to one quarter. For the type of videos that I'm doing, it's been fine. One caveat to the type of videos that I am doing is that it's mostly either YouTube videos, again, that I film in 1080, export into 4K, or it's social media videos, which I also do in 1080, and none of those are super, super long. So I have done half hour plus videos on this MacBook, but not heavily editing them, not heavily color grading them. So that's one thing I can't speak to is the exactly how this MacBook would perform um, with like a 30 minute plus video that you were heavily editing, um, color grading, like log footage, that kind of thing. Um, I would guess that if you're going to be doing that regularly, it might slow down a little bit for that type of thing. Can be done. If you're only doing it every once in a while, I think it would be fine. If you're doing more than 30 minute content with log footage, 4K log footage or um, even higher resolution with that, I think it might be uh, not exactly the best option for that specifically. For shorter videos, for YouTube videos, for social media stuff, I've not had any problems with it whatsoever. All right, so now I'm gonna go back to the studio, give you my kind of final thoughts and opinions and tell you who I think this would be good for and who I don't think it would be good for. So here are my thoughts on the MacBook Pro 13-inch 2019 in general. Um, I really like it. It works really well for what I'm doing, which is um, a lot of editing of social media videos, photos, YouTube videos, um, some commercial videos, uh, but, but all of those shorter videos. Uh, I think if you're doing something like that, it works perfect. Like I said, it works perfect for what I'm doing. Um, who I think this probably would not work well for is if you're doing like f longer short films or full length films uh, in high resolution, 
uh, 4K or, or, or bigger, I, I think you definitely need to upgrade to probably the 16 inch MacBook Pro at that point and, and maybe some of the upgrades for the 16 inch MacBook Pro um, or just go for the Mac Pro. Um, who I think this is good for in the video realm, like I said, if you're doing something similar to me, um, if you're doing YouTube videos, uh, 1080 or 4K videos that are somewhere around the 10 minute mark or, or shorter, I think you'll be fine. If you're doing commercial, um, like shorter commercials, um, social media content, I think definitely can handle that without any problems. Um, photographers, if you're solely a photographer, now this computer, this MacBook Pro would work great for that. Uh, it, it does really well. Um, I'm really happy with its performance with Lightroom editing photos. Uh, the screen is, is great. However, if you're only doing photo editing, you're not doing video at all, what I would actually suggest is to look at getting the newest iPad Pro. It has a USB-C connection and uh, editing photos off of that, um, getting Lightroom, Lightroom or whatever photo editing um, program that you're using and using it on the iPad Pro. Um, I've, I've tried this out. Um, I, I really considered actually getting the iPad Pro instead of the MacBook Pro. If I had been just solely doing photography, I would have gone with the iPad Pro. Um, photo editing on there is a dream, much more tactile and, and just a, a cooler feel. Um, and it still goes really fast, even if the specs aren't as high on the iPad Pro, um, it's very streamlined on the iPad Pro. So um, the performance is still really, really uh, comparable. The reason I didn't is because video editing on the iPad Pro is not as seamless as photo editing, at least right now. Um, but if you are solely doing photography and photo editing, I would suggest, I would highly suggest that you look at the iPad Pro instead of the MacBook Pro. If you're a hybrid shooter, if you're doing photo and video, um, again, as long as that video is not making like full length 6K, 8K raw uh, movies or something like that, um, then I think the MacBook Pro, this 13 inch version is a really great option for that. All right, so that's my thoughts and experiences on the 2019 13 inch MacBook Pro. Hopefully, if you have been looking into this as maybe whether it would be the right computer for you, you got some insight, um, maybe it helped make the decision. If it did, give me a thumbs up. Um, if you have more questions about this, about the computer, or uh, maybe more insights or something else that you want to know about it, put it in the comments below. Um, if you haven't yet, click the subscribe button, click the bell icon so you can get notified of all the new videos I make on this channel. And thank you guys. Mm -hmm.